If you've seen that one Cult of Athena unboxing video, you might be wondering, where is the review of these messers? What's taking so long? Well, it's a little more challenging than other reviews for several reasons. I'm going to give you a quick update. If you don't know what this is about, a lot of people have asked me to recommend a more affordable alternative to the Albion Knecht. So any kind of German medieval or Renaissance Kriegsmesser, which is translated to war knife, or a Langmesser, long knife, they have several names, but this is the, the basic type. They can be either straight or curved. Uh, this one here is actually a replica of a museum piece that you can see right here. So some of them did have uh, straight blades, but slightly curved is pretty common. And uh, they have certain you know, characteristic features that distinguish them from long swords. The, uh, the grip is usually different. Typically, they are made with handle scales. Sometimes they are covered in leather. Uh, sometimes the scales are made to fit together so you don't see the tang in between. And I haven't seen many on the modern reproduction market. In fact, these were the only two that I could find. There are, of course, others made by custom makers, but I want to focus on production swords because they are more readily available and usually more affordable. Um, there is also one made by Ronin, which I didn't want to include here because it's really more of a single-edged longsword. It doesn't have any of the characteristic features of a messer, it, like the, the guard and pommel look a lot more like a longsword. It, it is basically a longsword, just slightly curved and, and single-edged, so it's not quite the same thing. So I ended up with this one here, made by Niello Swords and uh, the Cold Steel. Messer. And um, yeah, I've been trying to do tests, or I have been doing tests with them, and I've been trying to figure out you know, how to approach this and you know, which I can really recommend. Now, there is the price difference to take into account. Um, this one is 180, this one is over 300, so we're almost talking almost twice as much. Before I talk too much about the things that I'll cover in the eventual review anyway, let's just talk about what happened so far. So I tried cutting with both of them, which really didn't work out. Why? Well, this is why. They are completely dull, both of them. They have about the same kind of, well, butter knife edge quote-unquote, which is rather frustrating. They just don't cut properly with such a dull edge. Then I tried them on wood, you know, branches. That worked a little better. And it was a little difficult to decide which performed better. So one issue that I had with this one is that the guard has come loose. And I know exactly why. If you look right here, You'll probably see that there are wooden shims sticking out. Now, I haven't added those. It came like this. So the maker relied on these shims to make sure it fits. Now, it is historical. Stuff like that has been found in historical original swords. But it's not something that I'm particularly fond of. Uh, it is easy to fix, which is why I'm more forgiving in a way because you just you just drive in more of those and it'll be tight again uh, the important part is that the pommel doesn't come loose because um, this one here is peened as you can see right there if this loosened up that would be more problematic the guard is pretty easy to fix it did make me a little hesitant to go for the full abusive testing though I settled on something that I find more realistic, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So, in terms of handling, I can already tell you this one clearly wins by a long shot. I mean, dramatically. This The handling is yeah, a whole lot better. In case of the cold steel, well, it's it's a very thick, very rounded, handle that doesn't feel half as good as the other one and uh, overall yes i mean don't get me wrong in and of itself it's not bad i mean i've, I've handled some bad swords 
this isn't terribly heavy. In fact, it's you know pretty reasonable in weight and the balance isn't too bad either, um, especially for the price. However, it's still night and day. I mean, that one feels so much more lively in the hand. This just feels like a metal bar. Yes, it doesn't, doesn't feel as much like a sword as the other one. And I can quickly show you why that is. So the cold steel here is the same thickness throughout the entire blade. This one here has a distal taper. It's thicker than the cold steel near the guard and thinner further up the blade. So that's really what makes mainly makes the difference. And uh, well, one of the things I tried was a uh, murder stroke into a piece of wood just to see if the guard would loosen up. Um, well, the cold steel was bent out of shape substantially. The other one, I, I'm not sure if this got really bent. I mean, it's, if I squint a little bit, it looks like this side is maybe a tiny bit further down, but it's not really significant. And also worth noting that the murder stroke did not loosen this up any more than it was. Okay, so one thing you may have already noticed is the edge damage on this. And this is after repair, by the way. How did that happen? Well, I decided the most realistic, most appropriate way to test swords basically is to use historical te techniques and you know, perform some cuts and parries with two swords and uh, or messers in this case. Appropriately at Blood and Iron, the historical martial arts school where I train, we practice historical sword fighting based on the manuals by Joachim Meyer, which is 16th century Germany exactly the time when these were used. So we used some of the techniques that were taught back then, at least the school's interpretation of these techniques. Now these were for long swords, but there's really no reason to assume that they would be significantly different for a messer. I mean, some of the techniques rely on a double edge. Those are of course not applicable or less so at least. I mean, some of them absolutely are. In order to stay safe during this test, we put on protective gear, even though I didn't have my fencing jacket on me at the time, and did this out of measure, meaning at a distance where we can't hit each other, which is of course not what you would do in a real fight, but again, for safety. And of course we didn't swing as hard as you would in real combat, but the impact is enough to reveal any weakness in the sword's construction. And this kind of blade contact is indeed appropriate. One of the techniques that we did is called a krumphau, which is used against somebody who remains in long point and has the sword out in front of them. And so in that case you would strike with a false edge and knock the blade aside, clear it, and then come around for a cut. And I know some people think edge-on-edge -edge parries are to be avoided. I used to be among them, but at this point it's pretty obvious to me that they are simply necessary. I mean, if you want to do a hard parry rather than a deflectional parry, which sometimes is necessary, there is no other way than to parry with the edge. I mean, not directly perpendicular most of the time, but at a certain angle and that can't really be avoided in real combat. So this is a perfectly fair test. The result, well, I'll let you take a look. Here's the aftermath of that test. The Niello Swords Messer has some relatively minor edge damage. Actually expected more, but uh, really the only significant nick is right here. I'm gonna try to get the focus right so you can see that. And there are a few spots here and there. It didn't get a lot of damage. As opposed to the cold steel messer. Can you spot the difference? This one is completely chewed up. I did not expect that it would fare this poorly. But there's all kinds of edge damage. In fact, it's not just the regular nicks and gouges. The other messer literally cut into this. I mean, if you look at this right here, for example, that's pretty crazy. And we've got you know, bits of steel hanging off everywhere. This is going to require quite a bit of elbow grease to try to fix. I don't even know if I can restore this 
to a usable edge. There's just gotta take off so much material. Even on the spine, it's got a few spots where the other messer just wrecked it. The Niello messer probably has a slightly thicker bevel than the cold steel one, but if I go to the undamaged section of the edge here, I can show you just how blunt this is. I mean, I can run my hand over, I can even push down on it, and nothing happens. Well, this is where we are at after about an hour of working the edge with a file and also the very coarse belt on the work sharp. So, it's still damaged. But I think this is about as far as I'm willing to take it for now. Also, I spent about well, a bit less than half an hour on the Niello Swords Messer and um, yeah, you can see it looks pretty good now. There's still a little bit of edge damage visible. I don't know if you can pick that up in the video. It's still there, but not a big deal really. So it looks like the Niello Swords Messer is made of substantially harder steel. Both the guard, which doesn't bend as easily as this one, and particularly the blade. Now, this one has barely any damage and the cold steel was all chewed up really and now i'm left with you know the decision of what to make of it to sum it up so far the niello swords messer is significantly better in handling and also finish it looks much better it feels a lot better and the blade is a lot harder uh, both lose as far as the edge is concerned they are both very dull the Cold Steel wins in terms of hilt assembly. It's much stronger. The guard hasn't moved even the tiniest bit, while the Niello one, well, needs to be fixed. And of course, the Cold Steel one is quite a bit cheaper. I've also done some thrusting tests with both of them, and I'm now planning to try cutting again once they have a proper edge. So I'll need a belt grinder for that because both of them will have to have their blades altered quite a bit in order to be even halfway okay at cutting. Well, this is where we're at now. I'll keep you updated and thanks for watching. A lot of people have asked me to recommend a more alt, recommend a more alt, alt, recommend a more alt, alt, to recommend a more affordable, alt, recommend a more affordable, alt, why is this difficult? Why? I don't understand. A lot <laughs> I can't even. A lot of... <laughs> you know, if you've tried it's the same sentence several times and you cannot pronounce it for some reason, <laughs> you get to the point where it's just getting hilarious and you can't even restrain yourself anymore. Oh. Okay, serious face. If you don't know. <laughs> Glorious outtakes. I've built up this. I've built up this, this tension where every time I start the sentence, it's funny. Oh, I might have to pummel myself a little bit too get out of this. A lot of people have asked me to f to afford a more recommendable <sighs> one of these days. And this, by the way, is why I run out of battery. <laughs> sometimes I have to do the same sentence like 10 times or whatever. And then sometimes I get too rambly, which I then have to cut out or something else that I'm just vaguely dissatisfied with so I, I do another take so sometimes this takes over an hour so yeah that's why I run out of battery power I try to tut, uh, tut katami I'm just having slips of the tongue left right and center mm -hmm. a German medieval and Renaissance re reddish <laughs> reddish songs the rebirth of radishes reddits are we getting there now that the, the reddit songs <laughs> The revival of Raditz. Ah, do we need that? Actually, yeah, we kind of do. He was he was kind of an interesting character in some ways. And that hair, though. Anyway, this is gonna take me a while. Mm -hmm.